Hi, Shane here. You're watching Sam for God. This is Mark. Check her out. So hi guys, how are you doing? Today is uh, Tuesday, the 10th of October, 2017, and I'm here with my friend Sharika, yeah. who you're not going to see for the rest of the vlog because no. we're just saying goodbye. <laughs> We've just filmed a very fun video, which you should check out. It will be coming out very soon in a couple of days. Uh, but um, I am off now to go and see the Young Frankenstein at the Garrick Theatre. Very excited about it. It's press night tonight as well, so it's going to be a great show, and I've heard incredible things about it from everyone who's seen it so far. So, um, hi. <laughs> Um, yeah, just leaving the house. This is my place. Well, not really my place, my parents' place. Completely irrelevant, but I'll see you at the theatre. So I'm just outside the Garrick Theatre now, looking lovely, just over there. And I had this really awkward moment where, because I thought I was running a little bit late, I'm meeting my friend Daisy, like, in a bit. But I was, I was terrified of being late, because, you know, the filming beforehand took a while, blah, 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 blah. So I got a taxi, something that I don't normally do, a cab, and then I told him, obviously, I want to get to the Garrick Theatre. And then he literally, oh my god. He obviously did his job, the man, the taxi driver, and <laughs> dropped me off literally exactly by the front doors of the theatre. And there's a, I don't know if you can tell or not, but there's a crowd of people at the moment just outside the theatre gathered there because apparently because it's the press night there'll be like celebrities and important people, you know, entering the theatre and I'm not a celebrity and I literally, I had this moment of like lols with the driver, I was like, I'm scared to go out. <laughs> But there's people there and people are going to think I'm this important person especially because you've like dropped me off exactly by the theatre as well I'm going to be coming out of a taxi and it just looks so like as if I'm important when I'm not so I literally got off the taxi and ran away from the theatre which is where I'm now anyway I'm very excited about the show like I said I think the young Frankenstein actually um, opened up in Newcastle or Sunderland maybe Sunderland uh, a couple of months ago and some of my friends have already seen it some of the people I know have already seen it and everyone has said good things about it big shout out to my friends Anthony and Amy they both saw it about a month and a half ago and they loved it and they've been telling me since then Sam as soon as it opens in London you need to go so I'm very very excited to be seeing it today and not just on a regular day either press night of all nights like how exciting can it be it's got an amazing cast and that's the main reason I'm excited about it like amazing theatre people in it. I mean, Diane Pilkington is in it, and as you guys probably know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, I'm a big fan of Diane Pilkington's work. I've followed her and everything she's done pretty much in theatre since I saw her in Wicked 10 years ago, so I'm looking forward to seeing her in this, but you know, the whole cast, as far as I'm aware from what I've seen, uh, is meant to be amazing, and I've seen pretty much most of the kind of lead cast members in other things before. Sorry about the mess of my hair. I'm gonna go and try to meet my friend Daisy now, see where she's at, and uh, yeah, enter theatre. This is the situation here, guys. As I said earlier, there's people here waiting for autographs and stuff. There's crowds of people. I don't think it's a red carpet. There's a press situation over there. Cameras and everything. Lord have mercy. I'm just gonna walk by casually. Oh, someone's just gone through. I don't think that there's a lady there. You probably can't even see them. Hello. Hi. hi. <laughs> oh my god, you gave me a fright. How, How are, are you? you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, are you I'm good. To? I'm watching the show. Are you? Yes, me too. I'm so Yay. excited. Yeah. I'm, just waiting for a friend. Stand I'm also here. waiting for a friend. Get out the way. Oh, well, she's here, here though. My friend is here. I need to find her. Oh, okay. But I'm um, very right. excited. So yeah, that's heard the thing. Right? This is Perry. Hey. <laughs> um, he also vlogs. Yes. Um, I'm so so excited. But um, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. I mean, I do know it's the press night, so it's a bit like. Yeah. But I mean, it's a lot busier than usual because you have general tourists just walk by and go. And they're what's going on exactly. Yeah, and that's it's it. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the key! Your nice name! Amazing! 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 You look lovely. You look lovely. Thank you very much. This is Daisy. You, you all know hey. the trick. She's been in many vlogs. Um, oh my god, it was a very stressful moment because Hi. I got a taxi because I thought I was going to be late. So it dropped me off just by there and then people were waiting to see inside. And I was so no, I went to the taxi driver. I was like, I can't leave. <laughs> I just, no, I, can you imagine coming out and being like, ah, oh, someone who's not even famous? It would have been like, smart, smart, no. smart. I doubt. Stand by the press, stand by, stand by I imagine, the press. I doubt yeah, it. Yeah, I'm so excited. Can you have a look at all the amazing people who are in this show? So we've got... Hadley Fraser, have you ever seen him? I anything? love Hadley Fraser, he's amazing. He did write Committee the musical. Oh, which I haven't seen, but I've heard really good things. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Leslie Joseph. I've yes. never seen her in anything, but... Legend. Yeah. yeah. Ross Noble, meant to be amazing. Diane Pilkington, I always Yeah, you, she, she knows, everyone knows. Uh, Summer Svalen, you know. The Svalens are amazing. And then Patrick Clancy. I was, I was just about to ask you, that's why I was a bit like, oh. In any case, it's a, it's a good, exciting so time to be alive. <laughs> the press night, what's going on? The, the vibe already from out here. Did you see anybody else? The main page. You saw all these people. I, I was just waiting. 
Like, there's, oh there's my like, god! There's Elaine Hayes there, a lady from Corrie. Like, I don't so, know who she was. Yeah, that's what I thought. Lee Mack. Okay. Mel Brooks, that's it. There you go. Oh, all, and Kathy, oh, you know yeah, the American yeah, comedian? Yeah, yeah. Do you know her? No, I'm not really into American comedian comedians, so but um, yeah, we should probably go in now. Well, I think the moment was like a, yeah. Oh, yeah. We are just going in now, these are our tickets. We're in the grand circle, but that's because it's a press night and you know, at the end of the day we're not that important, we're just um, lovers of theatre and YouTubers. <laughs> This is the cast for tonight. I'm pretty sure everyone should be on, so it's a full cast. Pretty sure everyone. I mean, should be it is it is a press night, so that's what you would hope. This is the ensemble. Looking marvelous. How excited are you, Daisy? I'm really excited, Samara. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Did you watch the one I yeah. had? How did you feel? I think when I watched, I couldn't watch some parts of it myself, like it was so hard to edit it. Anyway guys, we're just talking about a video that I recently uploaded. We're trying to go up to our seats now. I've never actually been to this part of the, the Garrick Theatre. Oh yeah, we do have a balcony. Wait, should you just go out really quickly and have a quick look? Um, so this is the view that you get from the top of the Garrick Theatre. I suppose you can see some of the press stuff going on down there still. Taking pictures people, I don't know who's there though. Can you see anyone, Daisy? No. No. I was just about to say, guys, sauce for my appearance not being the best because um, I stressed out trying to get here. Like I said, I was in a rush. And if you watch the video that will come out on Friday, if you're watching this on the day that you go up on Wednesday, the 11th of October, you'll figure out why because I had my face painted uh, like literally an, like half an hour before I um, left to come here. So that's why I am a little bit like Lord have mercy. So it doesn't, it's not the best thing that I'm here on a press night when everybody's looking glamorous like Daisy. And oh, hello. Oh. Thank you very and much. Oh, thank you very much. That's very, very kind of you. Thank you. Oh, we've got. You want to take yours? We've got uh, free programs. That is so exciting. So we're in our seats now, and this is our view, which is actually a really, really good view. I was a little bit worried about the location of our seats because I'm normally trying to sit. Well, you know, when I go to theatre, especially if I'm seeing a show for the first time, if I've seen a show loads of times before, like for instance, Wicked, that I've seen so many times now, I don't mind buying like the cheaper seats, like on the sides or not having the best view because I know what happens. But I genuinely feel like a new show, your view does make a difference oh, in what you think of it. Massive. Yeah, massive. Because I've heard of like people seeing a show that I've loved, for instance, from a good seat, and they're like, oh, I didn't really like it that much, and it was because they had a really bad seat, and I'm like, oh. Yeah. Um, you need to be immersed. Exactly. But I think this is a really, this is genuinely pretty good, like, um, so well done the Gareth Theatre for providing good views from every seat, I'd say. But it's in the highest level, I'm pretty sure. And um, these are the programmes that we have as well. Does it smell good? Here it smells decent. <laughs> Have you had a flick through it at all? Daisy's not a fan. Oh, oh, oh you do like it? I just, I just, I just like the smell of um, anything sure. that's like new. <laughs> but I'm weird. Um, actually, it's not one of the best best ones. It's, it's decent though. <laughs> I'm just like judging. Oh, we're just discussing smells, aren't we? I wonder if that's a criteria when they make them. Yeah, how good they smell. Um, but yeah, the show is meant to start at 7 tonight, apart from instead of 7.30 because it's the press night bar, but I'm pretty sure it is probably 7 now. Yeah, it's a press I, no, night. it's 5 to, it's 5 to. Oh, it's 5 to, so it might actually start on time, who knows. Um, but yeah, very, very, very excited. Um, like, I'm, I think it's going to be a very good atmosphere as well because Great it's press night. So yeah. that's pretty much me for now. I'll speak to you, I guess, in the interval. It's the interval. How are you finding it so far? It's so funny. It's brilliant. It's, so it's, it's funny. one of the funniest things I've seen in ages. Yeah, it's like so so good. Yeah. Everyone's amazing as well. Everybody's like, amazing. Uh, oh, so Fraser. He's, he's brilliant. brilliant. He's brilliant. Really, 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 really he's the best thing I've ever seen him in. I think. But no, he's really really good at this. Completely yeah. transformed into something different. Like you can't even tell that he's had. But he's in that sign of a good actor. I love Diane Seen as well in Act One. Oh, she, she was. She so was so brilliant. funny. She had a hilarious it. song as well. Um, I think she's more. She's in it a bit more in Act Two from what I've heard from my friends. Um, so much I mean the whole. Igor's hilarious. I don't know who the actor is. Noble, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, 
So, did you, did you, know, did you like him? Generally, uh, I, I, I don't. I'm not a fan of his humour normally, but he's, yeah, he's, he's really, really, really good. good I, yeah, I've never seen him anything before. I don't think. But no, he was. He's funny. I mean, oh, the whole show is amazing. It's and the like, sets it's are like great. Classic. It's classic humour. Like yeah. Classic yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm really loving life at the moment, and I like. I'm, I'm to go get time went by like this. Yeah. I don't even know what the time is. Cool yeah. past day. Marvelous. That means an hour and fifteen minutes, maybe. Anyway, it's the interval. We're gonna go and have a walk around, and then come back. We've just escaped to um, the balcony area here again just because it's so crowded. When was the last time you were here? Did you see the theatre? Uh, we discussed this. It was oh, only a few oh, months we're, ago. We're, we're smart for Tape Face. Yeah, Tape Face. Check out the vlog for that if you haven't. Yeah. When was that? May? Absolutely. No. No, June. Oh, July. Oh, I don't even know. I don't know. July. I think it was July because he was doing Love Island. <laughs> That's oh, why yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what, um, I was just, we were just talking about how most theatre shows don't seem to survive in the Garrick Theatre. Oh, okay, come here then. There you go. Yeah, and like we both saw these a bit back in the day. So yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw, I, I've just had Such a boys. Such a boys. Okay, yeah. Um, As was um, uh, uh, Zorro. Oh, that was ages yeah. ago, and I, I never, I never saw I never, that. It didn't oh. last very long. Yeah, no, it didn't. And also that play, that political play that you said you would have oh, liked. Oh, really good, really good. And, and yeah, I saw yeah, it, I didn't like yeah, it yeah. much. What was it called? Oh, what was it called? I can't remember either. I saw it doing Vlogmas last year. Um, but yeah, it's about wigs. Yeah. 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 Um, but I really hope this one stays here for a while. Uh, yeah, I mean, I it's so good. And Daisy just said, I, that. I think it'll get audiences every night because it is just it's classic so comedy. fun and it's slick and honestly, it's slick. yeah. And Hadley Fraser definitely is just, like amazing. Yeah. Obviously, because he's like, he's the, the base, the main character. But if he wasn't good, the show wouldn't be really good. I mean, if Frankenstein wasn't good, or Franken, or Frankenstein. Frankenstein. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry. <laughs> you mispronounced. I'm afraid. <laughs> But no, it's really, really good. I quite enjoy this uh, unique view that we have from the theatre right now. But I still also am very grateful about the programme situation as well. I mean, this is what happens when you come to the theatre on a press night. Just want to show you some of the merchandise they've got going on as well. So this, these are the prices. They've got the standard mug, which is lovely. If it focuses, there you go. Oh, is it going to focus? There you go. That's the mug. What else have they got? Look at the pens! Oh, that is really, really cool. I've never seen a musical do a pen situation before to They've got a, they've got a, what's the one for notebook over there? That's really cool. nice. Um, they've got a um, like a cushion as well. Very green. I like it. The magnets are cool as well. So these are the prices if you're wondering. And that's a lovely sign up there as well. It's so nice to finally be somewhere where there's a space. Literally the only place on the staircase. So busy. It really is. Also, there's a bit of greenery up there. It's almost like we're wicked, but we're not. Because I feel like the greenery is fun. And also the merchandise is fun. Anyway, um, you're and just. And all the staff have green sparkly bows in their hair as well. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, very true. But I'm not noticing that. Um, you just had a chocolate praline thing. It's okay. They should know. Is it good? Delicious. Are you guys a fan of praline? Praline? How do you say it? Praline. Praline. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but let me know if you are. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna go back to our seats now. Oh, it's so exciting! It's, it's such a good. It's just such a vibe. It, every oh, every song is getting so many cheers and like claps and everything and woos and I mean deservedly as well because they are all really good. Anyway, the time now is 20:34. In case you cared of the exact time, you probably don't. Um, the person is back up. The lovely young Frankenstein red situation, and uh, we're ready for act two. So yeah. We'll speak to you after. for the cast, really. I'm not going to fire anybody. <laughs> I do miss Tom Mayen very much. About three or four months ago, he passed away. He would have been so happy to see this before.
I mean, yeah. I can, yeah, say that really was fantastic. I mean, I'll talk about it more when I get home, but at the moment, I'm just like, wow. Yeah. What? Sorry. Oh, sorry. And we had the legend that was Mel Brooks on stage. I had a feeling he'd go on stage at the end. Cool. Because, because uh, as you might have seen, I, I, I don't know if it was the vlog or not, but yeah, you, you uh, saw the guy. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I didn't see him at all. And um, <laughs> it's really nice. It was nice that you got to go on stages. I'm just in a very happy mood at the moment. I don't think I've, I've laughed so much in the theatre in ages. Oh, yeah. Is that you? Lots of me laugh as well. Does it? I really love at shows. Oh, yeah, I yeah, laugh yeah, yeah. generally like so much, but yeah, shows yeah. and films as well, for some reason, they have to. I don't know, I just don't laugh as much. Not a, you're not a belly laugh. <laughs> exactly. Actually. No, yeah, no, yeah. I'm really not. That's why I'm not really into comedians, I don't know why. But, um, yeah, it was really good. Highlight? Oh, Diane Pink was really good. Yay! And I think she got the, probably the, the loudest cheer at the end, I'd oh, say. Her and, yeah, yeah. Um, she's not in it too much, but, oh, she's over there. Can we just, just I'm going to show her to you. The lighting's not the best, but there's the chick over there, Diane Huggington. Well, the lovely actress, Diane Huggington. We've got Hadley, Leslie. I mean, honestly, the whole cast was great. I love that situation over there as well, at the end. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to give too much away, actually, if you come and see it, but there was something quite funny about Patrick Clancy's character over there. It does say that he plays the character, but uh, we didn't know, and it was rather funny. What did you think of the song? Me too, me too. It, like, it's not easy for a show to have good songs, good, a good uh, book. No, it's because the lyrics, the lyrics are so on point. They were very yeah. funny, yeah. I thought the opening was hilarious. We got that song with the brain. Yeah. That was definitely like one of my favourites that Hadley Fraser sings. Um, oh my god, it was just really, really They're good. Really, really good. So I'll talk about it more when I get home. If it's you want some belly laughs, um, recommend yeah. completely. And I think that especially, you know, it's October time now. I know it's not necessarily just a Halloween show, but oh, yeah, it's, it's quite it's a good and convenient it? time to yeah. come, yeah. And you they do Daisy, so anyway, um, it's goodbye to Daisy for now. Goodbye! And I'll speak to you when I get home. Joke aside, I'm not home yet. <laughs> <laughs> on my way to the station to go home, suddenly um, uh, uh, we saw this ice cream. Inspired. Inspired. Inspired me. And now we're here having some ice cream. So, you know, my thoughts on the show will come eventually, but what place did you go for, Daisy? Um, 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 lime basil, strawberry and chocolate. Lovely. I also went for three flavours. Also, my voice, I don't know why it's going. I'm probably just a bit screaming too much or willing too much. Um, mine is very chocolatey vibe because I'm, at the end of the day, I'm a very chocolatey person. So one of them was just a normal chocolate, one milk chocolate. Hazelnut and what's that? What's that one called? The white one? Stratocella. That's the one. I, I don't know how to call it, so I was like, I don't want to embarrass myself. But very excited. Um, now we're going to say proper, an actual real goodbye to Daisy. This is probably the last time you see her on this vlog. And I'll talk to you when I get home. So. I am actually home now, not in some random ice cream place that both me and Daisy got tempted by earlier. Um, yeah, uh, it's time to talk about this wonderful show that I saw tonight. Like, joke aside guys, firstly, before we get into this review, or little thought section I guess, I don't really want to call it a review, it's more just like my opinions on it, which is basically the same as a review. Anyway, sorry about my voice, my voice isn't normal at the moment, like, I don't know, it's either me getting a cold, I, I feel like I might be on the verge of getting a cold. I've been sneezing a lot recently as well. Hopefully it's not a cold, <laughs> because I'm off to Disneyland next week. Um, or it could just be that I've been talking a lot and shouting, but I think it might be a cold. In any case, apologies for my voice sounding different, is what I meant to say. But anyway, Frankenstein, or Young Frankenstein. <laughs> wow. Honestly, I have been so, so excited about this show, like I said earlier in the vlog, because people that I know have seen the show, had seen it already, uh, back when it was up north, about a month or two ago, in Sunderland. I think it was in Sunderland. And um, everyone who'd seen it, like I'd see reviews both on Twitter and just on social media, and everyone said amazing things about it. And before, you know, before these reviews came out from the Sunderland run, and I'm, if it was in Newcastle, I'm really sorry. It was somewhere up north. I think it was Sunderland. Um, I was already excited anyway, mainly because of Diane Flickington, because I'm a huge fan of her work. You know, like I said, she's my favourite theatre performer of all time, I'd say. And so... It was just exciting to be able to see her in something new and I was like really looking forward to it and her starting the show and blah blah blah. blah. But when I heard people saying such good things about the show itself, I was like, this is so exciting. I didn't actually know much about Young Frankenstein. Like obviously I've read Frankenstein the book, Mary Sh Mary Shelley. Mary Shelley? Why can't I say it? Mary Shelley's book, Frankenstein. I read it years ago, probably like ten years ago now. And I really liked it, like it's a good book. Um in fact it's probably one of my favourite classics. But I didn't really know anything about Young Frankenstein. I'm pretty sure Young Frankenstein 
there's a TV show of it or there's a film or something. Uh, but I just didn't know too much about it. I knew that it was somehow related to Frankenstein, you know, Mary Shelley's actual Frankenstein, but I didn't really know it much else. Um, it doesn't matter though, because it's exciting to figure out and see what happens. It's a bonkers show, it's crazy. Like the things that happen in it are hilarious, but that's why it's a comedy, that's why it's so funny. I'm not gonna give anything away, because I feel like if, you know, if you go into it not knowing much, you'll find it like a funnier I think I mean I found it hilarious because so many of the things were like shocking to me um but really in a good way like very very funny um so yeah I mean the story like I said I'm not going to give too much away but it's a really funny story <laughs> that is related to Frankenstein like if you know the story of Frankenstein you know it's kind of related to it in some ways but even if you don't know the story of Frankenstein I mean most people know it even if they haven't read the book they'll know of it uh, but even if you don't know it it doesn't matter you'll still be able to enjoy it like it's very easy to follow um the music the songs were really really good um like it's been a long time genuinely since I've seen a new musical uh, in which the songs were amazing like, I really genuinely enjoy the songs in because I see new musicals quite often and a lot of the times I'm like, oh, they were good, but the songs weren't that catchy, like, I'm not, not very memorable. But this, really good songs, some really, really great ones in there. So the music and lyrics, or in fact, most of this show is created by Mel Brooks, who was there tonight as well. And my friend Daisy actually saw him as he was entering the theatre earlier. Um, and obviously he came on stage at the end, you might have been able to see him a little bit in some of the clips that I filmed. But um, yeah, music and lyrics is by Mel Brooks, obviously the book is by Mel Brooks. Um, which is amazing, like to, like I said, just the songs, there were some really, really good ones in there. I particularly enjoyed the first song, Brain. Let me see if there's a song list actually in this programme. There you go, we do have a, a musical numbers list here. So please don't touch me. Okay, The Brain was the first song, the opening, the opening song and the opening number, which was amazing. Um, kind of Hadley Fraser's introduction to the audience and he, I mean, it was amazing. I loved his character from the start and I thought the song was really funny as well. Please Don't Touch Me was sung by <laughs> Elizabeth, who is played by Diane Pilkington. Probably my favourite thing in the whole show, in fact. I mean, so many great moments happen later on, but weirdly enough, Please Don't Touch Me, I think, was my favourite um, musical number because it was just hilarious. And Diane Pilkington, like, again, from the start, just kind of everyone loves her because she's so funny. Um, there were so many songs that, like, He Was My Boyfriend was quite funny. Um, what else have we got here? Listen to your... Oh my god, Deep Love is another one. Again, this was sung by Diane Pilkington and another person that I'm not going to name. But that was also very, very funny. Well, it was mainly sung by Diane Pilkington, but the, um, it's sung again later on as well. It, really funny song, hilarious. Honestly, like, Surprise was also a good song. Like, I mean, as you can see, there's, there's a theming going on here. Like, um, there's a trend. I'm pretty much saying all the songs that were sung by Diane Pilkington were amazing. But it's because they were performed very, very well. And because I think the whole scene and the whole performance was a highlight uh, it meant that I really enjoyed the song as well but joke aside I felt like all the songs genuinely were really really good so um from the score point of view amazing like really just like, made me happy to see a, a new musical that I genuinely really enjoyed the music to um the book was great as well very clever some really funny lines like and the lyrics as well I mean I just just really good is all I can say I mean just I love the show as you can tell um and then the sets uh, were done by Beowulf bore it. Set design. Really good as well. Um, there are some cool things going on on stage at some point. Um, you know, nothing like too like out there that you're like, oh my god, I've never seen this done before. But just really good. Like, they did the job and they were very well done. Um, and yeah, very atmospheric as well. Like, it just kind of, they, they put the, basically what set design is meant to do is to make you feel like you're at a particular place. Very obvious, but I'm, you know, just explaining it. And it did the job very well. Like, you felt like you were in mysterious places at times. And yeah. Anyway, as you can see, I'm not very much into set design. So I can't really talk about it in technical terms. But I really enjoyed it. That's all I can say. And the costume design was by William Ivy Long. Again, loved the costumes, loved the wigs, loved everything. Wig and hair is actually done by Paul Huntley. Um, again, very, very good. The whole creative team, I thought, did a great job. Like, everything about the show was was really good. There wasn't, like, any kind of obviously bad or weak link to it. And the director of the show is Susan Stroman, who also came on stage at one point at the end of the show. And um, she's a five-time Tony Award winning director, which is amazing. Um, apparently she's also directed Scottsboro Boys, which is a show that I saw at the same theatre, Garrick Theatre, back in 2014. I really, really enjoyed that as well. So, loved it. The direction was fantastic. I mean, like I said, the creative team has done a great job with this. It's great. Like, I can't fault it on 
anything really. Now to get to the cast. I feel like I've already talked about most of the kind of main people in the show briefly um, and I would like to talk about everyone if I could like as in ensemble as well but obviously if I did that it would take a long time but it was a great cast overall um, is what I can say like a really really fantastic cast in fact again no weak link and it was just a, it was just great to see them on a first night as well because it just, you could tell that they were all doing their absolute best not that they wouldn't do their best on a normal show but because obviously they knew that it was press night they maybe like put that little bit more into it maybe like that's just what happens normally like that's just what press nights are um just because they want to just they want to make sure that uh, the, the people who are coming to review the show get the best version of the show that they possibly can so let's talk about hadley fraser hadley fraser this dude here he played Frederick Frankenstein, or Frankenstein. <laughs> this joke never gets old, to be honest. Um, now, he's done so much theatre, and I've seen him in quite a few things. Um, I think I first saw him in Phantom of the Opera many years ago, probably back in like, 2011, as um, Raoul, maybe, I think he played. Um, and he, he's done the Les Mis 20th Anniversary concert at the O2 Arena, which I also went to see. Well, I saw it on DVD, like, um, the live screening of Ace Under Pajama. He's done quite a few, like, he's done a lot of theatre shows, and... Um, I hadn't seen him actually recently, I don't think. Um, I think the last thing he might have done, well, St. John City of Angels at the Donmar was probably one of those, is it on here it says was his last credit. Um, but I've never like been a massive fan of him because I've never, I don't think I've ever seen him in a big enough role to be like, wow, you're really impressing me. Um, but I was so happy to see him in this, like, and it's definitely for me the best thing I've seen him in. He just like full on transforms into young Frankenstein. He is young Frankenstein. Everything about his portrayal is just fantastic. And yeah, really enjoyed him. Great voice, fantastic acting. Like he obviously because the show is called Young Frankenstein and he is basically playing the title um, role. He's playing the title character. So, uh, you know, there's a lot on his shoulders and he's completely capable of it. He's so good. Um, and we've got, we've got Leslie Joseph, uh, who is best known for playing Dorian Green, the neighbour from hell in the sitcom Birds of a Feather, uh, which I, as a sitcom I've never watched before in my life, but there you go, that's what she's well known for. I mean, she is quite well known generally, I think, so if you've probably heard of her, I hadn't really properly. I, to be fair, I had heard of her name, I've just never seen her in anything, so it was good to see her in something tonight. And she was really, really good. She plays Frau Blücke. Um and she is funny, very, very funny. She has some great moments in the show, some great songs as well. Um, yeah, really worked well with all the other characters as well. Then we've got Igor, who is um, uh, Frankenstein's uh, um, assistant, I guess, played by Ross Noble, who is a stand-up comedian, apparently. Um, really good, hilarious. Like, there was some hilarious moments between Igor and um, Frankenstein. I mean, Hadley's character is just amazing. Like, most of the interactions that he had with other people were just funny to watch. And then we get to <laughs> my favourite person in the show, obviously, Diane Pilkington. There you go, you've got her. Also, sorry about the mess behind the programme, just ignore it. But there you go, Diane Pilkington, who played Elizabeth Benning. Um, oh, like, I have seen Diane in so many shows now. Like I said, I, I first discovered Diane Pilkington in Wicked in 2007, July of 2007. I made a whole video about why in my opinion, her Glinda is the best Glinda there's ever been. So you can go and check that out if you want to. I uploaded about a few months, maybe three months ago. Um, and I really, obviously I loved her in Wicked. And I saw her quite a few times in Wicked. And then she left and I saw her in like 39 Steps was the next project she did, I think. Then she did like Masterclass. She's done so much. Like in the last 10 years, I've been lucky enough to follow her career and see her in the different shows that she's done. She's managed to do some amazing shows and play some amazing roles. Um, the last thing I saw her in was Whisper House at the other Palace Theatre. Um, earlier this year, which I really also enjoyed. Went to see it three times actually, even though it was a very short run. And then now this, and like, ugh, I don't want you to think I'm saying this just because I, I just she's my favorite performer. And you know, maybe I am a little bit biased, but honestly, she was the highlight of the show. She was the best performance of the night, without a doubt. And you could tell it from the cheers at the end. Like, everyone got cheers in the bows, doing the bows, you know, when people came, uh, you know, everyone separately, all the kind of main cast members came one by one. The show is mainly about young Frankenstein. So, Elizabeth Benning ben is more of a side character in a way. Uh, and so she's, she came as one of the, she was one of the first kind of people to come into the audience, not into the audience, but come on stage for the bows. If that makes any sense, I'm rambling, guys. And she, like, people were full on wooing, for, like, people were cheering so loud for her. And it was just so nice to see. And, and like, I expected then later on, for instance, that other people that come a bit later to get more cheers. 
but they didn't like she en ended up with the most amount of cheese from what I could hear anyway obviously I was in the grand circle so it could have been different but I felt like she definitely got the most amount of cheese very well deserved as well I think the next person that got the loudest cheese after Diane was Hadley Fraser but I mean he plays the main role and he is incredible as well so that's completely deserved as well um but even like doing the show the numbers that Diane Pilkington performed um, they would just get the, the most amount of laughs like she is such a fantastic actress and I've said this for so many years and I'm so like passionate about this like situation I just really think that she's amazing um, because I've seen so many performers over the years and Diane's just the, been the one performer who's genuinely like not never let me down but like just ge basically she's been the one performer that in and she's just been able to be phenomenal not just great but like that one step more amazing in every single show that she's done and she's done so many shows i've been able to see her in like so many different kind of roles and different um yeah different characters and not like all the same and see different sides to her and she's always managed to like i don't know just somehow be a highlight and again this could be because i just already think she's amazing but i do think that most people that go and see her in the shows that she's in also feel the same and i genuinely felt that tonight and even my friend daisy like the first i'm mean, gonna ask her you would have seen like what was her highlight literally the first thing she could think of was diane i think that's going to be probably the case for most people that go and see the show most people would be like yeah diane thinking there was a highlight um for me it would be diane and hadley fraser i think both of them were very very good but Diane just has this natural ability to be so funny. Like, you know, everyone was great. Everyone was funny tonight. And and that's what makes Diane even a better form. I'm going to stop talking about her, guys. I know it's getting really annoying probably because um, I've been talking, rambling for so long. But what makes her, what makes you realise that someone's an incredible performer is that when a cast, a whole, like, the whole cast tonight was very strong, I thought. There wasn't a weak link at all. And everyone was very funny. Everyone was very well cast. And yet, even though the cast, the whole cast is very strong, you know someone manages to be that like still like be that little bit better or not better just that little bit more memorable someone managed to give that slightly more funny or more memorable performance and for me that was diane like to be able to be a highlight when almost everyone is fantastic anyway means that you really are fantastic and like i said the audience reaction tonight just was made made it obvious that diane pilkington is very very well liked and very very funny and hilarious and the part like elizabeth benning's character is so funny anyway and it really suits diane's acting and performances i think I just, he's just basically she was fantastic sorry about the rambling but i just felt like i had to because she just everything i see her in i'm like wow and every time i'm like oh, i feel like i've done i've seen diane pilkington in most characters I can now like, surely there can't be any new skills that I've not seen her do yet but she just surprises me in a good way like not that I didn't know she'd be good but like she just goes miles above and does like oh my god she is just fantastic guys let's move on to the next person <laughs> Summer Strallen played the uh, character of Inga she's like a German person maybe um I I can't remember what the last thing was that I saw uh, uh, Summer in. I think it might have been... Ooh. So she's done Hysteria, the UK tour. She did A Damsel in Distress at the Chichester Festival recently. Top Hat, I think, is probably, in fact, the, the last thing I saw her in, which was back in 2012 or 13, quite a long time ago now. Um, of all the Strallens, Scarlett Strallen is the performer that I've seen in the most amount of shows. Um, I've seen all of the Strallens in a show, but... You know, I've, I'm I'm most used to Scarlett because I've seen her in two, like more shows, and I think I'd only ever seen Summer live once before, and it was in Top Hat. Um, but she was really good in this, very very good. Um, she's an amazing dancer, obviously, and you can see there's not too much dancing in this this show, but um, the moments where there are dancing, she's fantastic. She was pretty funny as well, like not hilarious, but it's a pretty funny character, and she she did it justice. Like I was really I was really happy to see her in this actually, because I I feel like I saw a different side to her or just to the Strallens, because I feel like the Strallens are very much well known for being incredible dancers, and it was just great to see her kind of be a bit more fun and funny and just kind of play a more light-hearted character. I really enjoyed that. There was a guy called Patrick Clancy who played the inspector in the show, and also a, there's a hermit in the show as well. He played two characters, and I obviously I didn't I hadn't read the program before, so I didn't realise that he was playing both and doing the bows is when you realise that he played, plays both because he kind of takes off his wig and his, um like... Uh, beard thing and you realize that he did both and it's just funny like well done because it's so you know you have to be very a very flexible actor to be able to do both parts in, in the same show and do it so well and so well done to him really enjoy his performance and then we get to um the last kind of i guess a person that i'm going to talk to in detail and that's the monster played by shula hensley 
uh, I hope I pronounced his name right, um, Shula was most recently seen in the new group's production of Sweet Charity opposite Sutton Foster. Oh, okay. Um, he last appeared on Broadway in productions of No Man's Land, Waiting for Godot, um, oh wow, opposite Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen and Billy Crow wow, he's done a lot of stuff. Um, other Broadway credits include, he's played the monster in Wrong Frankenstein in America, in New York I believe, also the US national tour, so uh, yeah, and he's played Kachak in Tarzan. He's done quite a few bits, but I'm guessing he's American because I feel like most of his credits are um, from overseas. But I loved him. Like, wow, the monster is fun. Is like one of the best things about the show as well. Um, again, I don't want to give too much away about like what he looks like or anything. I mean, you can probably find it out if you want to. But um, he was funny, like so funny. And there are moments with the monster, like in fact, almost every scene that the monster was in with any of the other characters were hilarious. Some really funny moments between the monster and Hadley Fraser's character, Young Frankenstein. I love them. Um, some funny moments between the monster and Elizabeth as well, played by Diane Pilkington. Really hilarious. I just, yeah, it was really, really good. The ensemble as well, I unfortunately can't like go through all of them, but it was a great ensemble. There's actually a tap number in Act 2, which I didn't expect, because I feel like, like I said, the, the show is not very much, it's not really a dance show, it's a comedy, so, and there wasn't very much dancing in Act 1, as far as I can remember, and then suddenly in Act 2 there's a scene where there's like loads of tap dancing and like a big dance number, which Daisy absolutely loved, and I also enjoyed it, because Daisy was loving it, and I just, I love a good tap, like, tap number, tap numbers are great, tap dancing makes me really happy, so that was really, really fun to see, quite unexpected as well, I think that's what made it even better, because none of us, none of the audience expected it, so that was really fun, um, but yeah, no, it, it's a whole show, like, as you can, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. I love the show, I recommend it. I feel like I've been talking for a long time, so sorry about that. But it was really good. In Act 1 as well, I think, there was a set piece. I, I don't want to give too much away, but if you do go and see it, there's a bit in, involving a candle and the positioning of a candle, and it is hilarious, like, so funny. Um, there was very many funny moments in the show, like, it's, there's, it's, there's not a dull moment at all. It's very clever, it's very nicely done, the the, the lyrics, like I said, really, really good. Um, the whole thing is really good, I feel like I'm just repeating myself now, so that's it. I definitely recommend Young Frankenstein, if you can go and see it. There's a nice picture of uh, the whole cast uh, on the back as well. Like I said, phenomenal cast, like the cast really, really, really make it. And I've just uh, reminded myself of Diane Pilkington's wig uh, at the end, which is hilarious. Oh, it's just amazing cast. I cannot wait to go back to this and see it again, hopefully from a better view. Like, obviously, my view was great tonight, uh, you know, grand, like I, I showed you before the show. It was a pretty decent view. You had to lean forward at times because the people in front of us were such some, you know, they were also leaning forward, so it meant that we also had to do that at times to be able to see properly. But overall, it was really good. Um, but I'd love to see it from the stalls, so I'm definitely going to go back to this as soon as I possibly can, hopefully the next few months, maybe doing Vlogmas, who knows. Um, oh yeah, before I go, something hilarious that happened was that I ended up being sat next to West End Producer in, um, in Act 2, which was hilarious. If you don't know who West End Producer is, um, he's like a theatre reviewer of some sort, he's very mysterious, you never know, you don't know who he is because he wears a mask as West End Producer, and I, you know, I don't, I don't think I follow him on Twitter, but I, I, I knew of him, and the person next on my right, uh, Defa wasn't Western producer in Act 1, because I would have noticed it if it was, but in Act 2, or in doing the interval, as me and Daisy were just kind of waiting for Act 2 to start, some dude just came and sat next to me, and both me and Daisy, like, as soon as he sat, we were like, was he here earlier? Like, because obviously Western producer's face or mask is so iconic that, um, I don't know, I feel like we would have noticed if he was there the first act and Daisy was adamant that he wouldn't have been next to me in the first act because she would have seen it, seen him otherwise and I'm, I'm pretty sure it was a different person next to me in act one so I don't really know what happened to the person next to me originally um, but it was definitely West End producer next to me in act two and he started talking to me as well which was funny because I was vlogging and then he was like, um, he asked me, oh, are you vlogging? and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah and then he was like, oh, that's really cool, like, what's your channel name? So I, I told him my channel name, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's funny because I wasn't, to jokes aside, like, I wasn't sure at first if it was definitely West End Producer, um, because I hadn't seen West End Producer's face in so long, or the mask in so long, that I wasn't completely sure. I had a feeling it might be, but I wasn't sure. So I was a little bit like, hmm, not sure what's happening here. But, you know, he was really, he was really nice. He asked about my channel and stuff, and um, obviously Daisy didn't know anything about West End Producer, so he, she was just like, oh... Just, just random guy who's obviously wearing a mask. I don't know what's going on here. And then in the, I think when the show finished, uh, I 
you know, searched her, googled him or something. I looked um, looked up his picture on Twitter and I was like, yep, that was definitely West End producer. And now I feel a bit sad because it would have been fun to get a picture with him, but I didn't. But it was still cool, like, who would have thought? And I don't understand why he was only there for Act 2. Like, I'm guessing in Act 1 he was sat somewhere else. Who knows? But there you go. I can now say that I've sat and watched the show with a Western producer next to me, which is um, hilarious. But yeah, just thought I'd share this moment with you as well, because it was quite a funny thing that happened, I guess, uh, in the interval. So yeah, very, very happy that this show is here, and hopefully this will break the chain of shows not lasting at the Garrick Theatre. I feel like it could. Apparently it didn't do very well on Broadway, but I feel like, I mean, if the tonight's atmosphere is anything to judge it by, you know, British audiences are going to love it, hopefully. So I really want it to last because it is very, very good. Like, the West End needs a show like this. And it's good as well because even though it's a comedy and there are some really funny moments in it, like, you know, very funny moments and some moments that involve maybe some adult things, but there isn't any swearing in it, you know? Like, I think things like Book of Mormon or Avenue Q have a lot of swearing in it, so maybe it's not the best thing to take your children to. But I feel like this, Young Frankenstein, you potentially could take younger people to see it. You know, there are some moments, like I said, that are a bit adulty, but you wouldn't, you know, if children won't really understand them, maybe, and it's not like obvious swearing, so they could still enjoy it, because, you know, there are moments in it that are very funny for children as well. So it could be a family show, I don't know. I recommend it anyway, like, please go and see it. They do daisies, like I said, £25 if you're not a student and £20 if you're a student. So that's amazing, and as far as I'm aware, the day seats are, like, best available, what they have on the day which most likely will be in the stalls. Um, so, yeah, let me know if you go and see it. Sorry about this long section of the vlog. Thank you to Daisy for a great evening. I genuinely enjoyed seeing this with her because, you know, she was loving it as well. And it's always good to go with somebody who enjoys the show as much as you do. We were both loving it. In fact, she was laughing more than I was, so that was good. But like I said earlier in the vlog, I'm not one to laugh easily at shows, so it takes a lot for me to full-on laugh, and this show was one that made me laugh a lot, so well done to it. But yeah, thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments if you're going to go and see the show, if you have already seen it. I mean, it was the press night, so you might have already seen it when it was up north or doing the previews. But I do recommend it, so please let me know if, you're, if you do end up going, because I'd like to chat to you about it. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!